Continuing on with finite limits, we learned how to compute them computationally last time. So let's go ahead and move on to our next example. So here we have the limit as x is approaching 2 of the function x plus 1 over x minus 2. So the first step that we do in any limit computation is I substitute in for my x value. This gives me 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 2. That gives me 3 over 0. Now, if I wanted to figure out f of 2 here, I would, of course, do it the same way. I'd get 0 in the bottom, and my answer here would be undefined. And this is some of the vocabulary language that you have to get used to. Functions are undefined. Limits, when we get something like this, we don't use the words undefined. The words that we use for limits is D-N-E, or does not exist. So functions and undefined has a partnership, and limits and does not exist has a partnership. We should never mix these two around. I should never say a limit is undefined or a function does not exist, because those language does not go well with each other. All right. Now, we know this is the way that it is because that's the way I told you it should be when we defined these steps in the last video, but why is that the case? And maybe we need to draw a visual to come up with this. Again, you can do this by hand since you know all the steps, y-intercept, x-intercept, vertical asymptote, horizontal or oblique asymptotes, but let's just do a quick image of this by looking at the graph. So I have my function plugged in for y equals x plus 1 over x minus 2, making sure I insert parentheses about both of those individually so the calculator reads it in the correct way. I know it's on my standard window, so all I have to do is hit the graph button. And I am looking for as x is approaching 2. So x equals 1, x equals 2 on this graph. Notice. Okay, it's not drawn here, but if I were to do this by hand, notice there's actually a vertical asymptote here. Notice on the left, it's approaching my vertical asymptote as it's going down, and on the right, it's approaching my vertical asymptote as it's going up. So since my graph does not match on the left and the right, that means my limit does not exist, hence the answer that I came up with here. The limits have to match from the left and the right for my overall answer to exist in the first place. Okay, let's move on to another example. Here I have the limit as x is approaching 1 of x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. I suggest you pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer to this one on your own. And if you need to, don't be afraid to review the steps that I gave you in the last video. The first thing that you do is you substitute in your x value. If no problems, you have your answer. If you get something over 0, like in the last example, it does not exist. And if you get 0 over 0, that creates a hole in the graph. So we have to come up with additional work, typically factoring or rationalizing, but maybe something else, to cancel out the numerator and denominator to see what value is actually our answer in that situation. So the first thing that I do is I substitute in my x value. I plug in 1. On the top, I get 1 squared minus 1. On the bottom, I get 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2. On the top, that gives me 0. On the bottom, 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2 plus 2, which, of course, gives me 0. So I have 0 over 0. That tells me that I need more work. So my function is officially undefined here because I have 0 in my denominator. So if I wanted f of 1, my answer would be undefined. But I do not care what's happening at 1 specifically. I care what's happening about 1. So I need to do this by using more work. And the more work I'm going to do in this example is by factoring. 
So this is equivalent to the limit as x is approaching 1. Factor the numerator, difference of squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. In the denominator, I have a trinomial. x times x gives me x squared. 2 times 1 gives me 2. If they're both negative, they add to give me a negative 3 in the middle and multiply to give me a positive 2 out here. Notice what happens. I have an x minus 1 over x minus 1. So I told you something in the numerator and the denominator would cancel. Now, in functions, this is approximately this because I still have a hole here. In limits, we just wipe those out with no issues involved. So this is equivalent to the limit as x is approaching 1 of x plus 1 over x minus 2. So I start my steps over. I plug in my x value here, and I see what happens. So on the top, I have 1 plus 1. On the bottom, I have 1 minus 2. That gives me 2 over negative 1, which simplifies to be negative 2. So my official answer here, the limit as x approaches 1 of this function is negative 2. Now again, if you're a visual learner, you might want to figure out how this actually looks like on your graph. It's a rational expression. You can do it by hand. Y-intercept, X-intercept, vertical asymptotes, um, horizontal or oblique asymptotes, or we can cheat kind of and use our calculator here. So I have my function plugged in for Y equals. Again, parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. Then hit the graph button because I know I left it at zoom six. I see this graph here, and what I'm focusing on is at 1, when x is approaching 1. So I look at my 1 value here, and I compare that with my graph. I see I have a value right here. Now, if I wanted to test this value specifically, I can do it the same way that we've done the last examples. Second, calc number 1, or I showed you the shortcut. You just have to type the trace button and then substitute in your y value of 1. Hit enter. Now it's going to give you nothing because of course it is undefined at that point. So my function is undefined, but I want to figure out what my graph is leading me towards. So since I hit trace and I'm at one, I can just trace it left and right from there to see where I'm close to. So if I trace from the left of one, notice I'm really close by 0.9, and I have a value here of negative 1.75. If I trace it from the right, Notice I'm a little bit above 1 here, and notice I'm a little bit above my y value there of negative 2. So it leads my graph closer and closer to this y value right here of negative 2. So that means I have the correct answer. I have one more example. Again, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up to the answer with this one on your own. Okay, so first thing I do is I substitute in my y value, square root of 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1. Of course, that gives me 0 over 0, which tells me I need more work. So since there is a square root in this problem, the more work that we need to do is we need to rationalize. What rationalize means is it means to multiply by the conjugate. What conjugate means is the exact same expression, but an opposite sign in the middle. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator here because my square root is in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by that exact expression, but with an opposite sign. So instead of square root of x minus 1, I'm going to multiply by square root of x plus 1. Now I can't just multiply it by it because that would actually change the problem. So I need to multiply by it in the denominator as well, because really I'm multiplying it by a very ugly version of 1, and I know anything times 1 is itself. So I want to simplify the numerator by foiling those out. This is one unit here. So that simplifies to be the limit as x approaches 1. When I FOIL out my numerator, I get root x times root x, which gives me x. 
root x times 1, which is a positive root x, inside negative 1 times root x, so negative root x, and last, negative 1 times 1 gives me negative 1. The ones without the square roots in it, you do not want to do anything with it because you want to hope something cancels. So I'm just going to copy down my denominator, x minus 1 and root x plus 1. Let me simplify the numerator. Root x and root x cancels, and that leaves me with an x minus 1 in the numerator. So officially, I have the limit as x is approaching 1 of x minus 1 over x minus 1 and root x plus 1. Notice what happens. I have a x minus 1 over an x minus 1. So this simplifies to give me the limit as x is approaching 1 of 1 over root x plus 1. So something cancels, so I start my steps over, and I substitute in my x value. That gives me 1 over root 1 plus 1, or 1 over 2. So my official answer here is the limit as x is approaching 1 of my function, root x minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 1. Again, if you don't trust yourself, you are always more than welcome to double check this visually by using your graph. So let me go ahead and plug this in my graphing calculator. So I have it substituted in for my y equals. If I graph it on my standard window, I see this graph here. If I want to see what specifically happens at 1, I hit my trace and my 1 value. Now, of course, that gives me an undefined answer here because my function is undefined there, but I can see what it gets closer and closer to from both sides. So if I push my arrow to the left, notice I'm close to 1 from my left, and I'm close to 0.5, which is close to 1 half. If I do it my opposite direction, if I'm a little bit larger from 1, meaning I'm close to 1 from my right, notice I'm close to 0.5 from that direction there. So my answer does make sense here to have my limit equal to 1 half. I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, I'm going to come back to that real life example that I very first gave you, and we're going to come up with the answer to it computationally. Now we did it before by estimating it by using the table, but now we want to figure out the official way to do it as well as we want to check the graph that goes along with it.